Oh. All right. Put it on. Now we're on. All right. We got uh, Kiss on the airport. So just us today. So let's begin with prayer and then uh, sing and do some things and then do communion. So let's go. Heavenly Father. We honor the privilege to take into communion, <clears throat> following the disciples, following the words of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that this morning will be for the glorification of Christ. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's begin with song. All right, let's all turn to hymn 109. Would you turn to hymn 109? And we'll sing three verses of Blessed Redeemer. We'll do the, the, uh, the refrain is only after verses one and three. So we go straight from verse two to three. Scripture reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting at verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is in the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man must examine himself, and in doing so, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself, if he does not judge the body rightly. For this reason, many among you are weak and sick, and a number sleep. But if we judge ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord so that he will not be condemned. We, we will not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home. So you will not come together for judgment. The remaining matters I will arrange when I come. All right, continue in song with me and join us to sing At the Cross, 157. Would you turn up to 
157 at the cross. Pleasure to serve you this morning in the offertory, taking the offertory and leading you in prayer, taking prayer requests. Um, um, let's see. For the uh, offertory, of course, uh, you have uh, uh, the main, our main uh, purpose of the offertory is keep our doors open and keep Herman taken care of. And uh, that's our first priority. We are looking for about $8,000 a month to do that. Uh, but beyond that, uh, we support the uh, youth group. Uh, through fundraisers, and there's going to be a few of those coming up in the very near future, I can guarantee you. And uh, uh, we have uh, several missionaries on our prayer list and that uh, we, we uh, support when we can, and some of you make individual uh, contributions to those missionaries as well. We have the Riesley Family Ministry in Mexico, uh, a magnificent family that is, man, they are the real deal as far as missionaries go. They aren't... Uh, uh, living a, 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 a 
overseas lavish lifestyle and coming back to the states where they keep a home here. They live there. They live in the same conditions as those people that they serve. And they do serve them in love to a tremendous degree. And uh, that is the springboard for them to spread the love of Christ and to present the gospel to others. They are the perfect model of a missionary and definitely deserve any support that we can give them. We have uh, uh, Fassel and Terry, of course. They uh, have a, a Pat Fassel being a native Pakistani. So uh, he has a tremendous uh, um, uh, outreach there in Pakistan on the eastern side of Pakistan, where they also run an orphanage and as well as a, a local church and a school. and. Uh, that's, that has some incredible crossover opportunities for them because they also serve uh, uh, Muslim children that want a good education because they do have a, a decent school there. So uh, uh, they have tremendous outreach opportunities and they live in uh, an environment of persecution of Christians. They're, they're limited in what work they can do, where they can live and things like that. So they are, they are uh, under the gun full time. They're the ones that live there and Fassel is currently in country right now. Uh, we also support uh, uh, Dan and Pat's mission in Africa and uh, I keep bringing up brother brother uh, uh, Linus Akfa. He's a tremendous young man. He's uh, been trained by by Dan in the uh, missionary uh, 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 theological schools that that Dan has put in there. He's one of the graduates of one of those schools, and he goes out to indigenous people. And uh, 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 we are currently taking uh, donations for for Linus Akfa. If you want to, if you donate online, you can. Uh, uh, earmark it for, for Brother Linus. If you write a check and put it for Brother Linus, uh, our diligent uh, uh, deacon in charge of those funds, Jeff is going to pick that up and we're going to save some money up for him, hopefully help him get some transportation. Um, let's see, as far as our, our local prayer requests go, uh, boy, for such a little church, we sure do have a lot of prayer requests. Uh, actually, we probably ought to go through there and see if we wean some of those out. I, I, I had to remove a couple of them last week. But uh, um, let's see, the Dake family uh, uh, is, is traveling still and uh, hope uh, they have a wonderful vacation. They've They've shipped all their children off to their respective colleges, and uh, they're getting a little vacation time. Boy, that, that's well-deserved. And uh, please pray for their safe return. It's almost time for us to do our annual planning meeting for, for the youth group coming up for the year. And uh, so we've got to get, get the next year lined out and, and ready for uh, uh, to serve these young people. It's amazing what God has been doing with that youth group. Uh, you know, all the children of the two main parents are, are grown and moving on uh, into college, and, and even some of them have started families, and um, God is shifting that this outreach from local children that are the, the age of, of those parents' children to college kids. And, and um well, we don't often get reports or see a lot of that. We need to make sure that happens more. But the, uh, the, the impact of our youth ministry is projecting into the future, which is exactly what we hoped it would do when we started the youth in, in ministry, right? And uh, uh, so there are young people that are being called into ministry. There are young people that are keeping in touch with each other and studying the Bible online. And uh, uh, just the, ex the exact impact that we hope that we would make. We, we think, you know, we think in terms of, okay, God did this. He's going to keep doing this. And we pray that he keeps doing this. And, but, you know, we don't have young people that draw other young people. And, uh, uh, and so that seems to be waning some. It's still there, but it seems to be waning some. But God had a plan for the future of this ministry, and it's marching on. So we're going to keep fundraising for it. <laughs> yes. I just want to add that several couples married out of that youth group. That's true, too. <laughs> and they are now young married couples in various places. Yes, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yes, there are, there are several young married couples out of that yet youth group, and they're establishing their marriage in the principles that they learned in, in on the Bible, right? So that's an awesome thing, too. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, um, Brian, how's your family doing now? Uh, they're, they're, they're doing well. They're blessed. I appreciate the prayers for them. Yes, very much. Okay. And uh, again, sorry for your loss, sir. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. And your family's going well? Everything? Yeah. Everything's good? 
Okay. Yeah, uh, I got good news, the separate story the, about our uh, update of the system. It went well last night. I was just about to ask about that. Yeah. You just got that done last night? Yeah, I got that done last night. And we have up to, uh, for this year alone, we have up to 84 countries now. 84, just this year or? Oh, just this year alone. Okay. Yeah. 84 different countries that are, are uh, download, downloading PDFs, listening online, yeah. downloading classes. Um, if one person is blessed with the gospel of Christ, it's worth millions for to have that ministry online. Right? Uh, good, good. And uh, how about you individually? Are there any prayer requests out there? Have uh, Jay and his family come back? Uh, no? Oh, yes. We're back. <laughs> okay. yeah. Sorry. No Five problem. weeks now. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you. Uh, Terry, she broke her elbow. Yeah, she uh, wanted me to ask for a prayer for uh, healing and pain relief, mm -hmm. and uh, she'll uh, she gets an X-ray on the seventeenth, I guess. Mm -hmm. so to find the, finally find out the true extent of the damage on her elbow. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know because she had one that determined that it was broke, so I'm not sure what this one's for. She it's, just mentioned it in an email to see if the bone stimulation is working. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So Terry Hallett, Rick and Terry, um, uh, Terry Hallett uh, fell when walking her dog and planted her elbow firmly on the sidewalk and, and had some damage to her bone and is in pain. She needs our prayers for healing and pain management. Okay. Anyone else? We have a prayer for my wife. Of course. And Judith. And, uh, uh, you know, the uh, easiest way to uh, 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 attack a pastor is for Satan to attack those he loves. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so not only do we care for her, for Judith and, and want her healed, uh, we want that distraction removed for Herman so that he can uh, concentrate on his study and delivery of the Word of God. So please keep Judith in your prayers and uh, pray for uh, the wisdom of her doctors because they apparently need a lot of wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bobby keeps improving. Uh, Bobby Thompson continues to improve. Bless him. And uh, uh, Tish is, is holding her on. I haven't gotten any new updates. How about you? No, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, it's day by day. You never know if it's going to be a good day or a bad day. So. Okay. All right. Well, uh, uh, if, you, if we have no further uh, prayer requests, I'm going to uh, lift up some of these and then we're going to do the. Yeah, we're going to do it. Everybody's going, do the laughter. No. <laughs> you had a prayer request? No. No. Yeah, we're, we're going to. We're, we're just waiting for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. These, these, I don't know about you guys online, but these guys cannot wait to put some money in a plate. <laughs> okay. So you guys get on the website and, and uh, equal donations there. Let's uh, 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 bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just uh, thank you that you used this little uh, congregation to have such a, a huge global impact. Heavenly Father, the, the young people you've allowed us to teach are spreading your word. The missionaries that we, we support are, are true in your word and delivering that gospel to others. The uh, opportunity to study your word is is being presented online heavenly father we we just thank you for all those blessings we thank you heavenly father for we pray heavenly father for uh, bobby's continued healing for terry's healing in her elbow uh, we pray heavenly father for safety and travel for the dates and anyone else who's out and, and about in the world Heavenly Father, we just uh, uh, pray for the safety of all the members of our congregation. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would watch over and bless our church, bless Judith and Herman and, and their health. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that in all things, this little assembly might glorify your Son. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give and the exercise of our faith. And we just pray, Heavenly Father, that you would take... Uh, these funds received and use them to spread your word and glorify your son. For it's in his name that we pray, sir. Amen. Amen.
Okay, it was an offering, but there was a handout, and it's been, uh, let's see, 20 something years since I've went through this section of the communion, and so we're going to go through it at this time, probably be my last time, and uh, so we'll just go through all these verses and uh, take a look at them. Dealing with, <coughs> dealing with communion and uh, given by the Apostle Paul. So let's begin with the word of prayer, begin with our study in the word of God. Let's pray. Now, Heavenly Father, how grateful we are for the word of God to understand offering, understand the communion, understand the relationship with each other. Father, we pray now that we are find a Christ. Pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Um, Kit went, home, went here, and um, I almost wasn't going to give a handout. And uh, well, you know what? Just get, get what we're going to be looking at. And... Um, I started printing them and found they're all pretty large printing that I have to use in here. So that's where you got it, and uh, that's where we got. So let's uh, begin with our look. And uh, here's communion. And uh, the disciples at the first communion, first time they were communion, were at fear worry, uncertainty of the disciples. Jesus Christ told them of his death and departure. This brought fear and struck to them. And in that context, Jesus Christ took bread of comfort and the cup of encouragement. Now, in a few moments, we're going to look at that in the Word of God. This is the only place that it is in the Bible, is in the Jeremiah. But we'll take a look at it as to what's going on with it in Jeremiah. <coughs> this is what the communion should be to, to us. It should be calming to our souls, comfort to us, as is death, encouragement as to our lives, and our purpose here on earth. So, it was 1 Corinthians 11, 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. Now that Paul is speaking. That the Lord Jesus, the night, uh, this time of Satan, time of Satan is night, in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now, one of the names of communion is Eucharist. This is the word to give thanks, which is an aorist participle in our text of uh, which means to give thanks, which became one of the names uh, for the for this worship. The Eucharist, which means to give thanks, which precedes his breeding, breaking of bread, and giving it and giving it to, for, to the disciples to eat of it. What a phrase! That Jesus Christ used. What an action of his love. Love that we are to imitate. Here Jesus Christ is the one giving thanks to God the Father. Here's Jesus Christ giving thanks to God the Father. Now, for what? For what giving thanks to God for what? Giving thanks to for his body in our place. 
That is giving his body in suffering for sins. This ritual that we're experiencing tonight and this morning is ritual of thanksgiving. Christ is giving thanks for giving his body in suffering in our place. We should be the one suffering. We are to give thanks for food to be taken after the, the pattern of Jesus Christ. So we are to give thanks in your prayer life when you're eating and different things. A lot don't. A lot of Christians don't. And uh, a lot just uh, do it in, you know, kind of in their mind for a thing. Nobody does it. And, uh, and you don't want to go into any kind of long prayer, but uh, take some, a second and give a prayer for the uh, offering or for the food that you're going to be eating. Now, bread. Bread speaks of the person and work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Bread speaks of the person and work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Bread is used for many things in Scripture. Here for the bread speaks of the person of Jesus Christ who was God and as God gave himself his body to pay the, the death for of our members of uh, the human race. Let's take a look at Philippians chapter 2 verse 7 and 8. Beautiful passage. But emphasize himself by taking the form of a bond servant a bond servant like just a servant bond servant and being born in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself as by becoming uh, obedient to the point of death alright just to get that now I don't want to miss it he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death and even the death of the cross. Now we're right now, right now this week, we're studying Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8 tells us that Jesus Christ was uh, learning obedience to God the Father. He was learning obedience to God the Father. Here the bread represents his, his person of being spoken, of being broken for the judgment of our sins on the cross. Bread speaks of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross and our first great deliverance. Of course, our salvation was our great deliverance. And here is the, and by the point is, there are many others, great deliverances for the believer of life. But the first great deliverance was our salvation. And here is the giving of thanks to God the Father by Jesus Christ. Question, for what? For what did God the Father or Jesus Christ give thanks to God the Father for? For the bread? No. But what the bread represents is death and glory. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement of our well-being fell upon him. And by his urging, we are healed. Isaiah 53, 7, 3. Now, the thing you want to do is every now and then is read Isaiah 53. It's a good place to witness to Jews. Isaiah 53, 5. Now, we should give thanks to God the Father. No, not much, not much for the food, and so much for the food. We do it for the food, but not really so much for the food, but for the glory of God. For the God given to us. 
salvation and the the offering of blessing food. Jesus Christ gave thanks that he can suffer. This is amazing. He gave thanks that he can suffer for our benefit. Here is the prayer <laughs> of spiritual love. Jesus Christ now gives thanks out of love to his sacrifice for the benefit of others. That's just amazing. He gives thanks for the opportunity to suffer to suffer for our benefit. This is the all important Hebrews chapter five, where the verse one says talk about gifts and sacrifices of sins. Now what are those? We've been studying that this week. What are the gifts, gifts and sacrifices on the cross? Gifts refers to general sacrifices such as meal offerings, and fat offerings, while sufferings, sacrifices refers to blood type of sacrifices such as burnt offerings, the pea, the peace of and sin offerings. Now, let's go to our study, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. And when he had given thanks, Jesus Christ had given thanks, he broke it. Said he broke the bread and said, this is my body, <clears throat> which is for you. Well, that's going to cause a lot of trouble in history and the Roman Catholic Church and a lot of people. They don't understand it. This is my body, which is for you. His body refers to his life. His game, he, he came, he gave his life for us. And no greater love hath any man than this that will lay down his life for a friend, for a friend with. It was a symbol of his, for his body. This form of language of flows through the scriptures. Indeed, in our languages, <clears throat> such a thing is used to represent another. Verse 25, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. This does not come from Passover. This is very important. The Lord's Supper is not celebration of the Passover. The Lord's table is unique. It is for the church. This is an unusual expression. He broke the bread. This represents to break bread is used only once in the entire Old Testament. In Jeremiah 16, verse 7. Now we've read it before, but today we'll spend a few minutes with it, looking at the word. Men, this is reading the whole text. And I'll explain if you want it. Men will not break bread in mourning for them to comfort anyone for the dead, nor give them a cup of consolation to, to drink for anyone's father or mother. Well, I was starting to read the whole thing. I'm not going to, but because it would be uh, about uh, close to 20 verses. But this is God saying and Christ saying he's not going to give this offering and this blessing to believers to give to other believers at this time. Hence the expression break of bread in the, in the, in the text normally used, normally used as an expression of comforting. Breaking of bread is normally used to comfort a person in their sorrow. So a man, a husband, his wife died, wife, husband died, 
children, people die. So this is comforting them. At the death of someone they love. This became a Jewish custom to go into someone else's home and share with them their sorrows and offer them comfort in breaking of bread. So you would take your bed, your, your this deal and with it, bread, and have bread in it. You come with another one with uh, wine in it. And you would break it down for them. Now they didn't have their own because of communion. But this one they did. So they'd break it down to have it at that time. Now this became a Jewish custom to go into the home, some of the home, and give to them the breaking of bread and the encouragement of the cup of wine. When Jesus Christ took a bread at this supper and broke it, he did not do this as part of the Passover. We are not celebrating Passover. We are celebrating a new offering or a new meal that Jesus Christ himself left for us. It was not done before, done right there. He did it with his 11 disciples and himself. Now, but he did not take another Jewish custom of breaking the bread to other comfort them to others. Uh, he loved at the at his own but at his own death and departure. So, breaking of bread symbolizes Jesus Christ offering of comfort to his own and to himself. This meal should give you great comfort when we get ready to take communion. It should give you great comfort. Comfort over the death of Jesus Christ and the departure of Jesus Christ. And we will give we, we will see giving of the cup is described as uh, des, 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 is designed uh, doing the same of in giving encouragement. You give the bread and give the cup for encouragement to life. So service, sacrifice, and serving to be one another. Now, but there is another concept along with the breaking of bread. Breaking is used to scripture for the divine judgment. And bread is for the body of Jesus Christ. This is a picture of his body which is broken for us on the cross. Breaking or the bearing or breaking uh, as judgment that belongs to us. The judgment belongs to us. It is important to remember that breaking or bearing breaking is a sign of divine judgment. It is breaking of a breaking of our judgment that we owe. We owe it. But since we're already broken we cannot pay the penalty. We're already broken. And he, by his love, took our place and was broken for us on the cross. Now, and bread is a type of his body. Bread is a type of his body. Therefore, he bore our judgment in his body. In this sense, he, his body is broken for us. This is important for the gospel, makes it clear that his physical body was not broken. John chapter 19, 
His body was not broken. John 19, 31. Now, the Jews, because it was the day of preparation, it's the day of Passover, so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath at night, for that, for that Sabbath was the hide hate, asked Pilate that their legs be broken, they therefore be taken away, because the breaking of the legs would bring their death. Verse 32. So, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man and the other man who was crucified with him. But, coming to Jesus, when they saw that he was already dead, did not break his legs. Very important. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a, with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. And he and he would and he would and he would as seen as seen has been as testified and his testimony is true. And he only shown he knows that his telling of the truth so that they so that you also may believe believe about him for these things came to pass to fulfill the scripture now a bone was broke of him was broken and again another scripture says they will look at him whom they pierced now let's go to 1st Corinthians chapter 11 and when he had given thanks he broke it break of bread is a term of divine judgment again we're saying that again on Jesus Christ that belonged to each of us and every member of the human race his body was broken for us now understand body was not broken but on the cross he was he was pierced for ours now his body was broken for us his bread represents his body being judged for our in our place so the breaking of the bread is like the breaking of the body but the body was not broken so you got to stay clear with what's going on in the scripture Notice that he broke it. He broke it. This means that Jesus Christ voluntarily put himself on the cross. Now, the Romans put him on the cross. The Jews put him on the cross. God the Father put him on the cross. And Jesus Christ put himself on the cross. All of that went. Gentiles, Jews, God the Father, and Jesus Christ. It was free will of his faith toward God the Father and his love toward mankind. You have to be free to love. To express love, and Jesus Christ was free. He is alive and free to love. And when we partake of the Lord's Supper, we are reminded that we are alive and free to love as Jesus Christ loved us. Now, a very interesting study of the same analogy of Jesus Christ's body being broken, being broken for all, all mankind is seen in two events of Jesus Christ. First one, the first feeding of 5,000. First feeding of 5,000 out of five loaves and two fish 
with the 12 baskets left over. This is the breaking of Jesus Christ from the nation of Israel. The emphasis here is the nation of Israel. So let's look at Matthew chapter 14, verse 13. Now, when Jesus heard about John, he withheld from, withdrew from there in a boat to a secluded place by himself. This is the humanity of Jesus Christ hurting the death of Jesus of John. And when the people heard of this, they followed him on foot from the cities. Now, when he went ashore, he, was, he saw a large crowd and felt compassion for them and healed them from their sicknesses. Now, when it was evening, the disciples, good old thinking disciples, came to him and said, let's get out of here. This place is secluded and the hour is already late. So, tents and send the crowd away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. So in a way, they had kind of thought for them. Now, but Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, we have here only five loaves of fish. That's good enough for me, for pity, for Peter and uh, me, if that'll be it. 18, he said to him, bring them and here, and uh, bring them to them to him. And ordering the people to sit down on the grass. I love that. It's a picture of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He, look, he likes me. He likes me to lay down in green pastures. He leads me behind quiet waters. So this is a picture of Psalm 23. He took the five loaves and the two fish just as he took bread at his own study and look upon heaven. He blessed the food and breaking the loaves. This is the point. And breaking the loaves. He gives them to the disciples and the disciples give them the crowds. He is, here is a picture uh, a way of picture of Jesus Christ's body broken on or, or judged for the Israel, for Israel, not for the Gentiles, but for Israel. And they ate and were satisfied. They were eating and satisfied. They picked up what was left over at the bread of broken pieces, 12 full break uh, baskets 12 that's going to take you somewhere these were about 500 12 5, men who ate besides men women and children now this was done here is a second feeding of the people now matthew 15 here is his body is broken for the gentiles for the Gentiles. We will not read the entire passage of Matthew 15, 29 to 39, but let's just look at Matthew 15, verse 36. And he took the seven loaves of fish. Seven. And he took the seven loaves and fish again, just as he took his bread at the uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and giving thanks. There's that giving thanks. This is the same word 
and used in 1 Corinthians 11 for Eucharist to give thanks. He continued in a reading, Matthew 15, 36. He broke them. Again, a picture of Jesus Christ himself being broken for all Gentiles and started giving them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. Now, just for your understanding, 12 is the number of Israel. That was the previous one. Now, 7, the current one, is the number of the church. So they've got the church, Israel, and then the church. Body of Jesus Christ being broken for Israel and for the church. It is broken for all mankind, but only those who believe appropriate benefit of his broken body. Galatians chapter 4 verse 25. This is an allegorically, allegorically speaking, for those people who are two covenants. They're not two covenants, but they're spoken as a allegorical. They're not literally two covenants. One <coughs> possession possessing from Mount Zion being children who are in the slaves she is Agar this was several such there are several such concepts given by Jesus Christ for example I am a vine I am a vine or in context blood is new covenant in light of what history has done with this declaration by our Lord, here is my body. When he took the bread. One, by no means did Jesus Christ mean or even imply that the bread he held in his hand was his literal body. Sitting down, sitting right there in the table, nor was the wine his real blood that was flowing through his veins at this time. This bread, right, right here in his hand, is my body. Bodies represent in in his body on death for our sins. Now, his body was not yet broken. This is all symbolic teaching. For those, for these men, and our literal, the literal of Lord, the Lord's table of the church. Two, lamb used in Passover was never thought to be in the actual person of the Messiah, but used to represent the person and word of the Messiah. It is not physical body or physical death of Jesus Christ that saves our spiritual death of Jesus Christ on the cross, but represents spiritual death of Jesus Christ on the cross. And three, no one takes a cup. No one takes a cup, and we'll kind of study this next week, is filled with blood in his and in itself the new covenant. It was going to take over Lord Lord's words living littering literally then Matthew 26 28 should also be taken literally when Jesus Christ said this cup is my body this is the point of 1 Corinthians 15 50 now I say to the brethren that bread that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God 
nor does the perishable inherit imperishable. So the next will come to the deal with looking at the body. All right, it's time now for our communion. I think all of you understand the, what to speak of the communion is about. We studied a little bit tonight, today, dealing with, I don't know why I always want to study things back in the night. That's what I get to teach you. So, uh, so we want to celebrate communion as the disciples did that night. So, We'll I'll pass the, the elements, the bread to everyone. received, Paul speaking, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Heavenly Father, it is our custom to take the heaviness of our soul, understanding what happened at the cross, what Jesus Christ did for us, where Jesus Christ is right now, we will be with him. We thank you, Father, for these things in Christ's name. Amen. Everyone hold the bread or the cup to everyone is finished. <clears throat> supper, Passover is over, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Heavenly Father, we consider it a privilege to take the Bible, understand this in detail, what happened that night. Jesus Christ and the disciples. What it means to us today. Father, we thank you so much for these things. We thank you for the food we're about to eat. Thank you for each other. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> 